<laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's see if our gopher wants to play today. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we're going to be talking about the Hungarian PA-63. It is a, a very unique uh, pistol. This is a surplus pistol, kind of considered military surplus. And uh, they can be had for really, really reasonable amounts of money. Uh, they're not really out there quite like they used to be. You guys are probably familiar with like Makarov PM which is probably one of the most famous and recognizable pistols from the Comblock and Cold War era. Um, the PA-63 is kind of one of the little red-headed stepchildren that gets tossed into a corner and everybody forgets about. Uh, because the Makarov was produced in such great numbers and is so popular and well-known, sometimes its little alloy cousin gets thrown to the wayside and people forget that it exists. The PA-63 was one of those guns that was an answer to the 9x18, uh, you know, a lot of Comblock countries that were under the whole, I guess, communist curtain during the Cold War and during the, you know, during that time, a lot of them, they would have to standardize on a caliber like 7.62x25. You look at like the Czechs with the CZ-52. They didn't want to develop or, or take on the Toporev, so they decided to design the CZ-52 so they could use the same ammunition, but they just really wanted to have their own gun. So this is very much the same way. You know, they probably wanted something along the lines of the PPK, uh, which is a very lightweight and controllable gun. Uh, a lot of the early PPKs chambered in 32 ACP. They did produce the PA-63 in 32 ACP as well. Those aren't generally as common, but you'll see some 32s out there. This one is chambered in 9x18 Makarov. They're used extensively in police use. Uh, I would imagine some military use as well, um, but it's a really neat gun. It is an alloy frame. It's got the hinge trigger, just like you would see on a, I'm gonna go ahead and let the slide go forward. It's got the hinge trigger for disassembly, just like uh, most Makarovs, pulls back and let that uh, go forward nice and gently. And you can see it's just a blowback with one stout mainspring. It's got the hinged uh, trigger guard for disassembly, just like a standard Mac. Steel slide that's blued. The frame is alloy. Now, a lot of people, when they start talking about these uh, PA-63s, they'll mention that the longevity leaves a little bit to be desired. It was a gun that was meant to be carried a lot and shot very little. So the 9x18 in this gun, it does kind of beat the gun up a bit. Over time, you'll start to see certain pins kind of get, gall the frame really bad. You'll see the frame start to get beat up a bit. That's not the kind of gun you're going to take out and shoot 1,000 rounds through in a range session or take out to some concealed carry class or injured shooter class and run 1,000 rounds and everything. Uh, it's not that kind of gun. It's really more of a, uh, you know, a duty gun in terms of, of their thinking back then. They wanted a gun that was lightweight, easy to carry, and could be used if it needed to be, but it was meant to be comfortably carried on a regular basis. So you just uh, hinge the trigger guard forward and uh, place it over to one of the sides, compress the mainspring, and then there you go. Okay, it's got a decocking mechanism right here on this side of the gun, so it's a double and single action. When I drew the gun from my holster earlier, the first shot was a double action shot. It's got a ridiculously heavy initial double action. Single action trigger squeeze, not too terrible. You can see that I put those rounds right in there exactly like I wanted to. It was making short work of everything at combat distance. Uh, so uh, pull this lever down and that decocks the uh, pistol. And then uh, of course with a magazine and it loaded, you would simply put it in your holster and go about your business. Now I generally will carry a Smith & Wesson shield on a regular basis, but sometimes when my shield is out of commission or if, I, if I'm just not in the mood to carry that, I do carry this gun on a regular basis. Uh, you gotta be comfortable drawing a gun and using it and everything like that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my ears back on, reload the gun, I'll try drawing again. Uh, the holster that I'm using is actually a custom made holster from All Purpose Carry. Uh, they're right here in Georgia, they're a good bunch of guys. You've probably seen them like, and, and just didn't realize it, 
uh, you know, they're the guys that pull up to the gun show and like the, the trailer and you can take your gun to them and while you wait, they make you a holster. So the Kydex I'm using is inside the waistband holster from All Purpose Carry. We can see here also that Chad's uh, PA-63 that he picked up has the original military flap holster uh, that has the little spot for the cleaning rod. Of course, his gun has a slightly different import mark on it, different markings, but it's essentially the same pistol. Uh, it is a KBI uh, import. Also here, we've got another interesting gun. This is an FEG SMC 918, which is basically kind of the commander version of the same exact gun. So you'll see some comparative shots that show how much smaller uh, this particular gun is. Now we're not gonna be shooting this gun today because this is kind of a collectible and I don't really wanna mess it up or anything. Uh, this is kind of one of my safe queens because this is actually a very difficult lun uh, gun uh, to locate. You can actually see that the mags are physically different as well. A standard uh, PA-63 mag holds seven shots. This little guy only holds six, but the PA-63 will work in the smaller gun. So if I wanna take this seven shot mag and stick it in the little, uh, little guy here, you can see the difference in how far that magazine sticks out. So that's an interesting footnote, that, uh, footnote there. This is also a KBI import. Uh, so it's really common to see them import marked and everything like that. Let me put my ears back on. This PA-63 is a great value. These are great little guns for the money. They can be had on the surplus end for real reasonable money. It does fire 9 by 18 All right, so the gun's loaded. I'm going to drop the hammer. Safety off. Put it back in my holster. Now I've got the mags just staged up here, but we're going to give it a try here. Well, it's a snappy little gun. I'll tell you, I just... I love this gun, it generally shoots pretty good. It's not a match pistol, guys, and I'll tell you, these things are snappy. It's not the kind of gun that's for the faint of heart, it's an alloy frame, it's got a reasonably powerful cartridge that's stuck in a blowback action. 9x18 is probably the most powerful cartridge you're gonna run into in a blowback design, so that makes for a stout recoiling little gun. It's not for the faint of heart, but that's the price you pay for a nice lightweight carry gun that generally pretty dang reliable. I've never had any issues out of these PA-63s. I'm gonna shut up and shoot here, instead of talking. You can see right there, we printed a nice tight group with the gun. One of the things that this pistol reminds me a lot of, and if you guys are looking for a modern equivalent of something that would be comparable to this gun, would be something along the lines of like the Bursa Thunders. Um, the Bursas are an alloy frame gun. They're very lightweight. They're chambered in 380. They have a very similar magazine capacity. Also, Bursa makes a gun called the Bursa Thunder Plus, which is a double stack 15 shot. And the overall scheme of the gun is very similar. Um, these guns can generally be had for a couple hundred bucks. That's been one of the things that people have been asking me a lot, like, hey, what are some excellent guns that I can get for real reasonable money uh, that are still reliable and that are still, you know, a good quality gun, something that I can carry just to, either as a backup or an auxiliary gun to go in the car. Uh, little PA-63, no matter what gun that I've ever had in my inventory, whether it's a J-Frame revolver from Smith & Wesson or one of these PA-63s, uh, I've been involved in situations where this gun has come in very handy and a PA-63 has always been one of my companions, kind of one of my little secrets in terms of uh, what I like in the way of guns. I've always been a big fan of Comblock weaponry, so from my perspective, this is just a gun I've always enjoyed. Like I said, not terribly fun to shoot, but reasonably accurate. All right, let's take out a couple of our evil sodas back there. Not too bad. Pop a few through our watermelon there. Just some 95 grain, nine by 18 ball ammo here. We're running Fiocchi, uh, just standard pressure, nine by 18, 95 grain ammo. 
All right, that round pretty much zipped right through the watermelon. I kind of expected that. Tell you what, while we're talking here, let me reach in my pocket. I'm gonna reach way down in the depths of my deepest pocket here. I've got a little bit of Hornady XTP. This is also 95 grain, and this is a 365 diameter XTP. Let me load a couple of these in here. We saw where that uh, ball round did there against the watermelon. Let's see how the uh, Hornady XTP fares out of the uh, 9 by 18 uh, PA63 here. These guns are always fun to play with. I enjoy them quite a bit. They're priced reasonable. You know, they don't have all the bells and whistles of some of the more expensive guns. It is a slightly antiquated design, but hey, they're fun to shoot. Also, the magazine release on this gun is located in the position that you would expect it to be compared to a standard Makarov. It has a heel mag release. This has a button conveniently located where kind of where you would expect it to be. All right, let's try out some of these XTPs to see how they hit versus the ball ammo. I'm gonna try the watermelon on the right over there. Definitely a bigger hole. And that's why I carry that round in most all of my Makarov pistols. If I'm ever in the mood to carry a single stack Mac and I'm carrying a standard Makarov PM or I'm carrying a PA-63 or one of these little commander style guns, which honestly the little gun I don't carry often because that sucker is a handful to hold on to to shoot. It's a brutal recoiling little, little guy, but it's small and compact. But if I'm ever carrying a gun in terms of carry ammo, that's what I run is the Hornady XTP round. And as far as I know, that's the only Makarov carry ammo available right now uh, that you can get anyway is from Hornady. And the box that I have, the funny thing is, it's an old Hornady box. I don't have it with me, but it's got my good friend Jerry Mitchellick on the cover laying down the law with his revolver. And of course, it's one of those old black, white, and gray boxes from Hornady, and it's got Jerry Mitchellick on the cover. So uh, that's the ammo that was. Uh, <laughs> delivering the goods there on the watermelon. So I'm gonna let Chad uh, take over here. He's gonna take a few shots. Uh, the gun's not running too terrible, okay? All the mags that uh, were running through it seem to be running just fine. Magazine availability, you're generally gonna have a hard time finding extra mags. So don't expect to have a, a, a ton of mags laying around. Generally, you're gonna find them with maybe a couple of mags. Generally gonna be missing the holster. I was uh, commenting to Chad earlier uh, this particular PA-63 that he picked up has the original military police holster, which is actually quite uncommon. It's not very common to find these holsters. I've been dealing with Comblock weaponry a long time, and I've been a fan of Comblock weaponry a long time, and this is the first actual PA-63 holster that I've ever seen. So that's saying a lot there because they're, they're considerably uncommon compared to uh, the actual Makarov variants, like for a standard PM. Uh, it's not uncommon to find these guns laying around in an actual Makarov holster. That's fine. It will work, like in a flap holster, whether it's East German or Russian or Chinese, whatever you can find. Uh, but that is the original intended holster uh, for this gun. So that's pretty cut and dry there. It's, a, it's an awesome double single action, semi-automatic. It's got a decocking mechanism, no frills, basic alloy frame, blowback. Disassembly reassembly is pretty much just like a standard Mac. Uh, you're going to deal with a little bit more stiffer recoil impulse. It does have the fixed barrel, just like a standard 9x18 uh, Makarov PM. The fixed barrel equates to some really good uh, accuracy, which is one of the things that these guns are known for is accuracy. You can see there, I mean, we've got targets almost out to about 20 yards here. I'm shooting a blowback gun in uh, what many would consider a, a anemic or weaker cartridge than a 9mm you know, Luger or whatever. But you can see the gun delivers the goods if you do your part and it's nice and slim to carry. So let me trade out with Chad and uh, we'll see how he can fare. All right, guys, hope you can see that the PA-63 is just an awesome little gun. And uh, I've got a few kind of personal insights to kind of the Makarov family. I mean, when I first started carrying, that's what I carried was an IJ-70 Makarov. And I used that exact same Hornady load because that was really the only thing out there as far as defensive ammo goes. And, you know, you, you kind of buy what you can afford, you know? and you know, I, I don't want to like piss anybody off, but you know, high point owners out there. I mean, if I had the choice between buying a Mac or buying a PA 63 and then buying a high point, I, I'd have to go with kind of the tried and true. I mean, not to say a high point doesn't work, but you know, these are military and police guns. A high point's not. So 
may be somewhat of an antiquated design, but it's still a blowback and they are pretty snappy on the recoil side of things. But you know, if, if this is what you can afford, I mean, I, I bought this gun with the holster and everything for $200 and that was just recently. That wasn't like five or six years ago. So these are out there and deals can be had if you look hard enough. Um, but I'm gonna shoot mine a little bit for you. This, this gun, I've only had it for literally about a month. I actually bought it on a recent trip up to North Georgia, stopped by a little mountaintop shop, uh, mountaintop guns, I think, and walked in and uh, they had it sitting in the shelf and worked out a deal and walked out with it. So, but we're gonna give it a try. I'm gonna shoot a group and just kind of see where it's hitting. And then we're gonna fire some more of this Fiocchi and uh, see what we can do here. I'm gonna take my first shot double action too, like Eric did. And the beaver tail on this thing is like non-existent. So if you're not careful, it will pinch the crap out of the meat of your thumb there. So let's see what we're working with. <laughs> well, that double action pull is ridiculous. All right, let's see. Okay. Let's shoot one more. It takes a minute to kind of get used to pressing that trigger and just how this gun recoils. There's no slide release on this gun on the external, so you, or on the external uh, frame, so you have to actually pull the slide back. So let's take another shot here on this other target. I'm gonna try to press the trigger a little bit better this time and see what we can do here. Still pulling them down. I'll tell you what, it is a snappy gun and it's hard to really control and shoot tiny groups with because these sights are minuscule and non-existent, but I literally took a couple of slow fire shots and stacked three shots just about on top of each other. I mean, there's not much more you can ask for. Let's go around and have a little bit of fun here. I've got a few more mags left. Three bogeys down. I mean, what can you ask for? Let's try our gopher there. God, those sights are teeny tiny. Yeah, right in the face. <laughs> oh man, let's try that little popper back there. I'm telling you guys, this is not a match gun. This is really, really hard to shoot this thing really consistently. Ah, all right, I'm gonna stick to the big targets. <laughs> These things just are immensely fun to shoot. You gotta love old school Macs, man. They're just, they're just great. Although this isn't a Mac, it's a PS63, but still. All right, I'm gonna dump a few into this uh, target right in front of me and just kind of see what I can do with that. Let's see, yeah, about, yeah, it's literally about 15 yards away, so it's a little bit further than typical combat distance, but let's see. I mean, come on guys. You take a gun like this, I mean, a couple hundred bucks, maybe $250, all right, and you invest in a bunch of ammo. There is defensive ammo available out there. And then you invest in a couple of concealed carry classes. And then by the time you tack all that cost into play there, then you've come up to the point, ooh, what are you doing there? Get out of here. You come up to the point of cost that you would have in say like a high-end like defensive gun like a commander size 1911 or like a really tricked out glock or something like that you know you buy a glock or a smith and west mmp and then you put night sights on it i mean you're talking probably 650 to 700 dollars at that point whereas you could have had gun ammo and training all for that same amount of money so it's all really personal preference but some people wouldn't carry something like this but I mean, like Eric and I have mentioned, I mean, it's good enough for the military, it's good enough for the police. It is an old design, but it still works. And it works very well, as you can see. So, just a matter of shooting it and getting used to it. Let's try to take out a couple of sodas with these tiny little sights here. Ooh, yeah. Whoa, yeah. I see you down there. Yeah. Get some. Oh, I'm gonna pull a plinkster move or I'm gonna attempt to hit that one swinging. Oh no. Yeah, <laughs> take that Dave. 
I'm going to turn it back over to Eric. I'm having a little bit too much fun. He's probably, he's giving me the scorning eyes. So um, I'm going to put this thing back in the holster and uh, take it home and clean it up and put it in the safe. And uh, the thing is, I know that if I ever need to, I can pull this guy out of the safe and I know it's going to work. And I know it's going to shoot good and put the shots where I want them. So uh, keep that in mind, guys. Yeah. All right, I'm going to try this double action out of the holster again. That's one thing about this gun, double action is a little bit silly, heavy, but that makes the gun very safe. All right, so let's try it. Not too bad. Well, it's snappy, takes a bit of getting used to. Not too bad. All right, try a rapid fire here. Tell you what, it puts them in there if you do your part. All right. Not too shabby. More accurate than it needs to be. All right. One more mag to rule them all. Let's see, we do have a few sodas still hanging up back there. That gopher has been laughing at us the entire video that we only shot him once. So I connect with him a couple of times here. There we go. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thank you for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed yourselves. We hope that you saw the amount of fun that this gun can really be. You know, the PA-63 is a, uh, I don't want to say an unknown gun. I mean, they're out there. They're relatively common. They're not rare or anything like that. It's just that they, they tend to get thrown to the wayside because a lot of people associate a 9x18 uh, gun with a Makarov. I mean, think about it. There's guys that go, oh, that's a Makarov. Well, not technically a Makarov. If you say something's a Makarov, it's got to be a Makarov. I mean, it's a specific gun design when you're referring to a Makarov because of the, the chambering and everything. But... It is an interesting variant uh, that deserves its place uh, in the Makarov family and, and in that series of guns. It's an interesting collectible for somebody that just wants an awesome little gun to stick in the safe and just take out and you know have some fun with every now and then. Or somebody that's looking for a reasonably priced carry gun uh, that's lightweight, easy to carry. You can see they shoot really good if you do your part. Now granted, maybe not the most comfortable thing in the world to shoot, but again, like I mentioned in the video, they're meant to be carried a lot and shot little. That was kind of their intended purpose. It is an alloy frame gun, so they don't wear particularly well. It's not one of those things you want to take and you know shoot 10,000 rounds out, out of or anything like that. But thank you for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. We've got many more on the way, more surplus guns, more long guns, handguns, you name it. Five guns videos, firearms facts, gun gripes. Uh, we do kind of a little bit of everything. So uh, we appreciate your support and everything. We'll see you next time.